Reports of sightings poured in. One resident reported seeing Joanne with an unidentified man near railroad now. tracks behind the Katrinax home. She was carrying a baby and seemed frightened by the man pulling her further into the brush against her will. In response, FBI agents and state police immediately conducted a massive line search of a four-mile stretch near the railroad tracks. The search continued through the night. They scanned the area inch by inch as choppers circled overhead. But again, investigators found nothing. Trooper Joe Kosovar now co-lead investigator with his partner, Bob Egan, recalls that reports of sightings continued. They saw her along the railroad tracks. They saw her on an airplane. They saw her in a convenience store with the baby. But none of them checked out. Uh, they were false leads, and apparently people uh, who they saw and thought they saw were two different people. Christmas passed and spring began with still no word of Joanne and Alex. Then on April 9th, a farmer was tilling his field in Heidelberg Township, 15 miles northwest of Catasauqua. He saw what looked like a pile of clothes at the field's edge. When he walked over to investigate, he encountered a horrifying sight. Human remains. Four months after the disappearance of Joanne Katrinak and her infant son, Alex, a farmer found the decaying bodies of a mother and child at the edge of his Pennsylvania field. The FBI and troopers arrived immediately. Dental records would later confirm what they already suspected. The bodies were Alex and Joanne Katrinak's. Joanne lay on her back a diaper bag like still on her shoulder. I don't see any visible wounds. She had been shot once in the head and beaten about the face. Alex was face down on his mother's stomach, dressed in the blue snowsuit he'd worn on his ill-fated trip to meet his grandmother. The bodies were 50 feet past the end of a trail that ran through the woods. Nearby, crime scene technicians found a baby bottle and a rattle. To trooper Bob Egan, the location of the items was significant. You could see items that had had fallen to the ground almost in a sequence as, as, as if uh, an assault started and Joanne was walking or running away from the assault and she was dropping items along the way. It appeared the killer had driven up to the end of the trail and from there had forced Joanne to walk the remaining 50 feet. Evidence technicians would spend 15 hours searching the area, but they found no shell casings, fingerprints, footprints, or murder weapons. In the hopes that the forest debris might yield answers, they collected leaves and dirt from beneath the bodies and sent them to the police lab for closer examination. For Major Robert Wirtz and the others who worked the case for months, the finality of this brutal murder evoked a barrage of emotions. When the bodies were found, there was a period of time there when it was uh, very difficult for the, uh, for the officers that were assigned to this investigation. I took it very personally, uh, and it, it was hard, because I think they were holding out hope that, you know, she was going to be found alive.